uh, I have a video of Nick Ricada being completely drunk out of his fucking mind that I could have played. This is a video that was put out um, by Ricada on Locals, and I've never played it before, though I've been meaning to. This came out like a couple weeks ago. God, I'm fucking stupid chat. Yeah, the hot tub stream. Oh my god, so fucking torched. Here we go. It's, uh, god damn it. There's a chup, uh, a, uh, I mean, there's a fucking hot tub here. What did I do? on the wrong stream. I didn't do anything wrong. A stroke? Yes. Look, I drank a lot of liquor tonight. Way too much. Way too much. But I'm all good. Just don't drown. I'm not going to drown. What, what am I, black? My eye, the, the light is so fucking bright. I'm trying to live through it. What are you guys doing? There's two streams? What are you talking about? There's two streams. I closed the other one, didn't I? Did I not close out the Rumble stream? Oh my god. Two locals? How are there two locals? I'll figure it out later. This is the charm. This is the charm of sober streaming. Let people know to come here. You guys, that's on you guys. Do you think I'm gonna leave here? Do you think I can possibly leave this stream? You think I can literally, like, you, you're like, oh, rag is, he can go to the other stream and tell people where to go. I can't do shit. I'm tossed out of my fucking mind. I'm okay with this. Where's Camelot? He's in, he's at his house. Camelot's in uh, Alabama. I'm in Tennessee. Uh, tomorrow, I think uh, Camelot and Cecil and shit are going to come out and hang out. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I'll pause it there. You guys act He's just wasted. He booted up locals and then like a nine minute streamer is just like embarrassingly intoxicated. I really, I genuinely, truly believe that he has suffered some kind of brain damage or gray matter loss. And now he is like a completely different person. Like his behavior is in his social reactions to stuff are almost unrecognizable. And, uh, there's a, there's a, the, I, I even hate talking about this cause it's just so anti funny, but Riley, if you don't remember who Riley is, let's do a quick rundown. Dick Masterson, also known as Juju, the cow, a man who gets fucked in the ass while dressed as a cow. Um, did a podcast or does a podcast called the dick show and one of the producers of the dick show who was responsible for getting uh like collins organized and all sorts of shit was riley riley is like a hardcore druggy loser he has absolutely no ambitions in life all he cares about is getting uh getting drugs and he was the producer um he was one of the reasons why dick and i had a falling out when I was in the Discord uh, on the Dick Show, um, I would get into fights with Digibro a lot because he's a pedophile and I think he's a piece of shit. And I, I tell him that to his face that he's a piece of shit who should kill himself because he's a pedophile. And then Riley told me that I should learn when I'm not welcome. And uh, after I left the Discord and I told Dick, I said, Your producer told me that um, I'm not welcome here. He published like a tweet that said, Employee of the Month, Riley. So after that, I was pretty, pretty fucking done with Dick. Um, also fun lore, there was a mentally handicapped furry named Mitt Salad who called into the Dick show and uh, said 
Dear Dick, I am just turned 18. I draw furry pornography. And when my parents found out that I draw furry pornography, they told me I may either leave their house or uh, I can stop drawing furry pornography. And Dick said, you are 18, and if you're making money from drawing furry porn, tell your parents to eat shit. Mint Salad became a friend of Dick, and Dick passed her along to Riley. To this day, I believe, Riley and Mint Salad are an item, and Mint Salad does OnlyFans to help make money so that they can live their debauched, degenerate lifestyle. So, literally, entirely thanks to Dick Masterson, a severely autistic girl, left her parents' home to pursue a career in uh, drawing furry porn, and now is a literal whore who does OnlyFans videos with uh, granny panties that have skid marks in them because she lives in a trailer with Riley, who was the producer for The Dick Show. And in the middle of this um, feud that Dick Masterson and Vito the Pedophile are having with um, Eric July, the black guy who does the rip averse comics. Riley drives all the way out to the middle of fucking nowhere in Texas and visits the um, warehouse, I think an office building, where a lot of like the actual bureaucratic work of Ripa's business is being done. And uh, he, in the middle of the night, drives up to their window. And it's not like an, an office where people visit to like do to buy shit. It's just like an office thing that people use to do office work. And he sticks a sticker to the window with a $20 bill and says, try ignoring this super chat or something. It's like, cause apparently Ripa didn't answer a specific super chat. So Riley drove out there to stick a $20 bill to his window and say, ignore this. Um, uh, Eric July, of course, takes issue with this and says that he's lucky that the security guy didn't shoot him because in Texas, um, you are actually, you are able, you're legally able to shoot and kill someone who is conducting criminal mischief on your property. And in general, that means graffiti. It means that if someone is tagging your building, your office building in Texas, you are allowed to pull out a gun and murder them on the spot. And that was just what he was saying. It's not even castle that not sure. It is literally, if you are defacing a building, if you're doing like petty criminal mischief, on, on a uh, piece of property, the person who owns or is responsible for protecting that property can kill you. So, yeah, missed opportunity, no shit. So, Eric July um, sees that Riketa is, like, defending Riley. Because Eric July says, I, you know, I could have shot you. I probably could have shot you and got away with this if uh, I saw you doing this, if the security guy saw you doing this. And Rick Hayes says, whoa, buddy, your interpretation of the law is actually erroneous here. In reality, if a, a sticker is not the same as a writing, when they say writing, they don't mean writing on a sticker. They mean writing as in graffiti. You're technically wrong, buddy. So Eric July is like, what the fuck? You know, these guys are literally showing up to my office buildings and trying to put shit on the windows to intimidate the people who work for me. Not even for me. Like, the people who work for me who go to the fucking office. And he says in a super chat, he's like, let me on your show. So they have a, a, an argument. And um, the argument is exactly how you would expect. Every time Eric July says anything, like, this is wrong. This guy is obsessed with me. He's sending out people to fuck with me. I don't appreciate it. Uh, now, Rikada takes this and parlays that into, like, a legal argument. Well, actually, when they say inscription, what they mean is tagging. They don't necessarily mean a sticker. I don't think that I personally would risk my freedom by shooting Riley for using a sticker because of the way that the language and the law is written. And, like, Eric July is just, like, taken aback by this. Like, I'm not making a legal argument. I'm not a lawyer. And, by the way, Riketa is also not a lawyer in Texas. So, all he can give is his best guess. He's never been to a trial period, so he can just give his best guess but he continually takes this this moral argument of these people should not be doing this this is tantamount to stalking it is like directly trying to interrupt my ability to conduct my legally protected businesses and Riketa tries to transition this into a right and wrong in the law sense which is not what he's arguing 
it's extremely disingenuous. And Rakita continually does this thing where it's like, you know, I think that you're being over emotional and stupid and wrong. And you're just, you know, a fucking idiot. And you run your fucking black lips all about all this gay shit. And it's fucking stupid. But I love you, brother. But I love you, brother. I love you so much. And I wish you got all the money in the world, brother. I love you. And I love what you do, man. I, I, you're just awesome. And it's just like the most disingenuous thing ever. It's like, yeah, you're just like a big dumb gorilla and you don't do anything right and go fuck yourself, you stupid piece of shit. But I love you. And I, I think that the Rupa verse is a great thing. And I wish the success. It's like, it's like, like surely as, and it worries. The sad thing is that it, that it works. It's like people are dumbfounded by like, wow, Ricardo is so impartial. He has such well constructed criticisms, but is also a big fan of the Rupa verse. He really, uh, Ripa should really just take his word for it and just let Dick continue to fuck with his business without any sort of retaliation whatsoever. No, very Christian, very Christian behavior. Um, so yeah, it was like bizarre to watch. And I, I felt bad for him because I think, um, I think that Eric July really thinks that Rakeda is his friend and he's not in case it's not obvious. Rakeda is not Eric July's friend. Eric July is the new Vic Mignogna. Uh, here's how I recon here, in, in retrospect, here's how I think about the Vic Mignogna shit. I don't think um, Rikita likes anime at all. But when the Vic Mignogna case happened and he started commentating on it and it brought got all this traction and all these anime fans to his podcast, he raked in literally millions of dollars off of them and, par and you know, got a contract based off that attention. And then when the Vic stuff was done, and all those fans were scorned because they fucking lost. And Vic was out, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the attorney that Rakeda suggested fucked everything, literally fucked everything up. Ty Beard fucked everything up. The reason, one of the major reasons why they lost that case is that the anti slap law required evidence to be submitted. And Ty Beard thought he was being clever by submitting the evidence on the last day of filing. Because that way, the responding party would have less time to assemble a defense to it. But he accidentally um, did not file in time. So the bulk of the evidence that they had played this game with, this game of, of like deadline chicken with, they lost. And that's why the, in the, the judge did not accept the filing late and said, well, there's no fucking evidence because you didn't file it. And they lost the case because of that gay shit. And that was entirely Ty Beard's fault. It was entirely his fault. Um... So after this happened and he was done with the anime people, he said, fuck anime, fuck all you losers. Anime sucks. Uh, you're fucking retards. Fuck off. That was basically it. And he was done with the anime shit and he went to his hedonism debacle. And then now he's looking at the comic book Marvel people like this is it. This is the next thing. I'll suck off uh, Eric July, maybe even get him to fuck my wife because that would be awesome. And then I'll just milk the comic book retards for all the money they're fucking worth. Show up at a couple comic book conventions, make another million dollars off of that, and then I'll be done with that. And they can go fuck off too. And now, now that there's a rift between Eric July and Dick Masterson, he is 100% going to uh, pick Dick over Eric July. But because he wants Eric July to continue to give him money and attention and to bring his comic book people into his fold as the base law guy who sticks up for comic book people and is anti-woke... He's going to do this thing where he like humiliates Eric July passively and then says, but I love you, brother. You're awesome. And your comic book is so great. And I wish you all the money in the world. I hope you sell 2 billion copies of the Ripperverse and th just do that continuously until Eric July is washed up by this. And then he can move on to the next person. Cause I think that Eric, that um, Dick Masterson and Rakeda have this unspoken agreement and the same thing with Dick and uh, Ralph. Anybody can be friends with Dick Masterson. Anybody can be friends with Dick Masterson, but you cannot criticize him. There's an unspoken agreement and maybe even spoken, but you will not criticize what he does, who he fucks, the drugs that he consumes, his takes on lollycon and child pornography and having sex with little girls, you will not, you and, and who he associates with and their takes. If you have any criticism for any of that shit, keep it to yourself. Don't talk about it. And that's why uh, Ralph will never say anything bad about Dick and Rikita will never say anything bad about Dick. And Eric July asked him repeatedly. And I feel bad for Eric July because he's like, 
He's a black dude. He likes comic books. He wants to start a small business. And he gets into this this debate bro shit with Rakeda. And Rakeda is like an expert, literally a, a, like a law, law degree holding sector veteran who knows how to be as slimy as possible. And, Rick, and R- Eric July is trying to talk to him like a human being. It's like, dude, do you not see that these people are, are like being fucking assholes? It's like, well, uh, I guess, if, you know, I don't think that I maybe I would think that's dick behavior. But like, I don't know. I talked to Dick and he's like, I didn't do anything illegal, bro. So I'm just like, I don't know, man. And he's like, he's, he's not talking to a person. He doesn't recognize that because he's not really he's not expecting that someone can be so fucking two faced. It, it's, it's beyond his comprehension because he as a normal person who's only interacted with other normal people is completely un- unprepared for dealing for someone like Rikeda, who was not, who was a sector, right? As opposed to a normal person. And, uh, like I said, I, I feel bad for him. I really do. Cause he, um, he expects, he, he expects that he actually thinks that Rikeda is trying to be impartial. And Rikeda says all these nice things gushing over him and his comic book. And that he, he loves his business and what he's done. And he's trying to be impartial and he's just trying to, he's really upset that Dick is doing this. He's thinking, Oh, he actually does mean it. He's just in a bad position because of Dick. And he's like, no, he's trying to lie to you so that you go on his show and bring drama clicks to him so that when people search Eric July, the first thing that shows up are clips of him, you know, uh, belittling you and treating you like a retard kid that doesn't get it and making you look like a dipshit because it makes him money. It makes him super chat money. It gets attention to Rumble, which ups his contract uh, negotiating power and it gets some super chats and ad clicks and all that shit at his expense. And the way I would describe this is that um, it's like Texas Hold'em. It's a lot like the game that Eric July and Rakeda are playing is like Texas Hold'em in that every time the blinds go around, every round that he plays with them, it's actually Eric July is the only person playing blinds. Every round, he puts in money, and everyone else plays at his expense. And then sometimes when there's a big ante up and Dick puts in all his his reputation chips and Eric July meets that, it the, the river comes out and someone's holding more than they were before. Somebody loses and somebody wins. But every time he plays, he's losing passively. And if he doesn't understand the game that he's playing, he's always going to lose. And it's like the the correct answer is not to play. Ice these people out, recognize them as what they are. Dick Masterson is chronically addiction, addicted to attention. It does not matter if it's good or bad. You can call him a pedophile. You can make fun of him for being a little faggot that takes it up the ass. Uh, you can make fun of him for being like a failed L.A. comedian. You can make fun of him for being a failed like womanizer. You can do all this shit. He does not care. Anytime you give him attention on Twitter, he is hyped. He is fucking psyched. Even when I make fun of him on the forum, he'll repost my post on the on Twitter and be like, Joint, call, him the, call him the show. Call him the show, Josh. Call him the show. And it's like, no, I'm never fucking talking to you again for as long as I live. Um, Vito gets called a pedal. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. As long as he's able to keep being a creepy weirdo, he doesn't give a shit. Um, and then Riley. Oh, my God. There's not a thing that Riley wouldn't do for fucking attention. So the and and Rakeda is basing his entire career all fucking over other people and bringing into the fold their audience. So uh, I, I I do feel bad for Eric July and my opinion of Rakeda is like worsening constantly because they really it, it, I felt I felt I feel bad for fucking with Rakeda like I do um, because. I don't want to show my hand too much, but he, he did something for me and it wasn't like where I owe him. Let me be clear. I do not owe him money. I do not owe him a fucking thing. He suggested something to me that has paid off enormously. And in a way I'm kind of grateful, even though it's just like coincidental that it was a good thing. Um, but you know, I've always appreciated that. And, but now when I look at him and I look at how he talks, uh, and what he talks about and how he behaves on, and how he treats people and how he like just lies in like the weirdest way possible. Um, I just think that like, this is like a completely different person. Like it's like when someone has a, like, a, like a serious traumatic brain injury and they wake up from a coma 
and their personality is completely different. There are many medical cases where this is the case where someone comes out of a, of, of a coma and they're just like a belligerent retard asshole that nobody can recognize because they've literally suffered a personality change as a result of brain damage. And I, I honestly, I honestly, this is the only way that I can, uh, that I can figure out what the, what has happened with him is that he has drank himself to the point where there are holes in his brain and he is now a completely separate person. Like he's, he's had an actual reconfiguration of his personality. So, yeah, I don't know. I'd like, a, I, I find this really despicable. And my, my point is, is, um, it was, Dick made me laugh for the first time in a long time. Cause he went out, um, cause Eric July said something about how cats were, were, you know, fu or doing something. I don't know. He used some, some weird, you know, black term for something. And then Dick came out and said, well, maybe you should clarify how you speak because I don't understand abonics. And I thought, wow, I didn't realize that Dick was just going to go completely racist with this fucking random guy who's just making a comic book. <laughs> Who Dick has literally zero reason to have any beef with whatsoever. Um, but if Dick and Vito want to be more racist, I approve of that. They can do that. What's that going to do? <laughs> <laughs> how, how can you tank your reputation any worse? Just start calling him the n-word on the show. <laughs> Just start <laughs> start making monkey noises at him. <laughs> Just, why not? Un become unhinged. Become ungovernable. Ungovern um, whatever. So, what's this? Uh, b something about talking DMs. Yeah, the talking DM shit. Let's de-escalate this in a way where I have total control over the uh, the conversation, and nobody is a witness to it. There was a, a Eric July. This is funny, and I don't know if this is what it seems like, but he um did like a promotional deal for some of his merchandise, and there was a five dollar promo code that was just pull up. And I realized that me saying that Ricada should pull up is a little bit of a meme now. And I can't tell if that is a reference to that or if it's just a coincidence, but it did make me laugh. No, I don't know. That's my take on the Ricada stuff. I really, I really, 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 really do not understand why this guy... Um, I mean, I understand. I, I guess I understand it. I guess Dick is literally just in it for the money. He sees Eric July as somebody that he can easily manipulate and exploit into giving him attention and, and uh, drama to, to monetize on the Dick show. And I guess Ricada literally just sees him as a springboard to jump off of and get comic book money flowing to him. Because what's his face? You know what it is? This is a <laughs> I didn't even think about this. Who there isn't um. Jeremy Hambly, the the quartering, isn't he like one of the biggest Rumble superstars? And he's like all about the DC Marvel comic book shit, right? That's what he wants. Rikita saw how much money that fucking quartering makes off of his podcast and thought, damn, I gotta get in on that shit. I gotta find some fucking retard in the comic book industry to milk for money. And that's Eric July. Oh, great. He's anti-woke. He's a black small business owner that makes some fucking book called The Ripiverse. Fuck it. I'll use this retard and I'll milk him. I'll be like the quarter poundering too. Oh, it's just the quartering. Quarter pounder is the is the meme. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that was an accident. <laughs> okay. Jeremy Hambly, the quartering. Let me organize this in my brain. Quarter pounder pounder is the the meme. Okay. <laughs> sorry, the wires cross in my brain sometimes. <laughs> um I, that's not wet brain. That's just how I am. I'm just built this way. It's not my fault. <laughs> Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CAC of Remember to like and subscribe.